we're building a race drone. Hey guys, this week we're doing something different. Last week we worked on the Steady Shotbot circuit board. We etched that on the Nomad. Um, we're waiting for some solder masks to arrive in the mail. And I also received some of the brushless gimbal motors for the Steady Shotbot and the quality just wasn't there. So I had to reorder a better quality motor and those should be coming in about 15 days. So in the meantime, we're gonna work on something cool. We're gonna build a racing drone. This is not a racing drone. This is a Phantom 3 Professional. It's got the 4K camera and the thing drives like a Cadillac. It's, it's literally impossible to crash unless you forget to tighten a prop or you run into the wall of a building. That aside, we're gonna build a racing drone. All right guys, so this is what we're dealing with. These are all the parts that we need to build our racing drone. Um, now there's lots of options and it gets confusing because there's so many variations. And if you go online, you look at the videos, they're all very specific from part to part. Um, you, you may be using an XSR receiver or you may be using a, a different brand. Same for the antenna, same for the camera, video, motors all pl play a role in it, what ESCs you get, batteries, uh, how quick can they deplete or provide a charge to those batteries and ESCs to determines how much thrust it'll have and how fast it will go. And then what controller you get, what are the pros and cons. Um, but anyway, so what are we doing? You look at this stuff, it's all complex, there's lots of components and parts. Well you have to really break it down to simplify it. And if you, you think about it, you have a motor, a speed controller that controls that motor, a battery, you have a receiver. That right there is an electronic skateboard. Um, you pair it up with some gears and put it on a skateboard and then you have an electric vehicle. So multiply this times four and you have a quadcopter um, because you're gonna have a motor on each corner, an ESC on each arm. You're gonna have a, a receiver to receive the commands that you're giving it. But in addition to all that, um, you have video because this is first person view. It's gonna give you the perception that you're flying in the cockpit of a jet. And quite literally, there's on-screen displays that will show you the horizon and um, telemetry of your the flight vehicle uh, overlaid on top of your video. So you have special antennas, specialized cameras, on-screen display chip, VTX. That'll send the signal back to the goggles. The motors need some intelligence behind them, so you have to have a flight Flight controller. This is a bare bones racing flight controller and really all it does is accelerometer and gyroscope that keeps it on the plane that you're telling it to. So that if you're flying this and you tell it to pitch forward, it's going to pitch forward and it's going to hold that for you. These are the bare essentials. We have a couple of things that are a little extra like the on-screen display isn't necessary but lastly obviously you need a, a good controller. Um, this is a Tyrannus X9D. It's a 15 channel controller, programmable, talks to you so when you have your goggles on you know what buttons you're flipping and things like that. Uh, lots of cool stuff, lots of complexity, but we're going to break it down and make it straightforward. We're going to build out this frame by putting the motors and ESCs and power distribution board on it and then we're going to go from there and add layers. We're going to add video and then we're going to add flight controller and then we're going to button it up and take it out and fly. Um, but before that, we have to start tearing open some of these packages and start getting things nailed down to this frame. So we've got a lot to do, so let's take it over to the workbench and start soldering. All right, first thing we're gonna do is get the power distribution board mounted on our frame. This is where the battery energy comes in and gets distributed out to the rest of the systems. Um, we'll be connecting the ESCs on each of the arm. We'll um, then mount the motors. We'll use thread lock to make sure that those uh, motors don't vibrate loose. And then we'll be uh, putting caps on all of the ESCs, which will prevent back EMF power spikes and protect those circuits, kind of buffer that noise in the, the power distribution center. All right, so let's get to work. All right, so woo, that was a lot of work. Uh, well, it wasn't so much a lot of work as much as it was a little tedious work. 
Um, and what we have now is uh, the power distribution board has been set up in the middle of the frame. We've got all four motors mounted with um, Loctite on all the, on the bolts. We've got our ESCs connected to our motors and our ESCs connected to the power distribution board. Now all these yellow wires are um, signal wires which go to the flight controller and the flight controller can tell the ESCs how to power the motors. Um, so one of the next things I need to do is uh, run some continuity tests on all my contacts just to make sure I didn't short anything out in the process. Um, so after that then we have um, the flight controller board which I have just resting on top of this um, and I'll start wiring that up. So the orientation is going to be off um, by 90 degrees so that I can access the USB port. That's important for um, when you're doing firmware updates. Alright, next steps are connecting the ESCs to the flight controller and then we're going to start looking at how we're going to install the VTX, how that's going to connect up to the flight controller, uh, and we'll go from there. Ah, the wires are so tiny. Oh, man, seriously, this is, uh, it's not difficult um, well the most difficult part is trying to find the right and accurate information on the internet on how to wire up your specific components and here's really where your OCD kicks in I mean these things have tons of wires you got flight controllers and power distribution boards and ESCs and cameras and VTX and receivers yada yada I mean so you can have it look like a rat's nest or you can take your time and make sure that the wires are routed correctly um, being aware of not running power over sensors and things like that where you can run into problems and have electromagnetic interference um, with say an accelerometer or a gyroscope or something like that so it's a little tricky there's a little thought that goes into it but um, trying to get it really clean and tight and you know there's a practical reason for that too uh, such that if you crash and a branch comes in here and hits a wire and pulls it out then there's a chance that you can you know it can be a more fragile build than if you route things uh, in ways that you can protect the wires so there's a lot of work going into that and I wouldn't say that it's rocket science but it is um, definitely tricky to get all of the wires where they need to go in the specific configuration that you want uh, I've got most all of the power distribution boards still have to hook up the ESCs but I'm waiting to really commit because I'm soldering all of those connections I don't want to deal with loose connections while flying around and, and the vibrations can can cause that um, so I'm trying to be thoughtful about that I have printed uh, 3d printed a few parts uh, so this is a little block I'm going to put on top of my flight controller and I'll be able to mount like this receiver and my on-screen display on top of that that should still fit underneath the top plate which then goes on top here so there's a little bit of space in there and that's not uh, flattened down all the way uh, so you can see that's how everything fits in there it's like an ice cream sandwich you run out of space quickly I've got the camera installed there too you can see it's pointed up and that's because when they're flying they're generally going at about 45 degrees if you're going full uh, throttle but yeah so lots of tedious work and so that's where we're at the next steps are we're gonna put caps on the ESCs still to protect those from power spikes and then we're going to um, get that VTX wired up and then we'll be ready to start configuring Tech tip. So you've invested a lot of time putting all of the circuitry in, soldering all of the connections, and if this is your first um, drone, you may be scared about plugging in power for the first time, and rightfully so. There's a lot of possibilities where you could have shorted this out. The PDB has tons of connections, the flight controller has multiple connections, and between the on-screen display and the RX and the VTX and the camera, ESCs, motors, of course you're curious of whether or not you got it all right. Well hopefully you've taken the opportunity to do continuity testing across all your contacts and you've been as proactive as possible to try to prevent that but in the case that there is a short you don't want to just arbitrarily hook up your battery and then have it smoke and fizzle out because that's a terrible place to be after you've invested all this time so um, what they have is current limiting circuit and what this is is basically putting this bulb in line with your positive feeds and then what we want to do is then connect the battery to that and then connect that to your device um, so it gives you the opportunity to save your device. If, um, if there is a short, then this bulb will light up before it fries. This is a 4S cell, so this is 14.8 volt. So it may not last quite as long. It will definitely give you the opportunity and the flight controller to go into a low power mode if it detects that draw. With that, we're gonna go ahead and fire this puppy up. Cross your fingers.
So obviously it lit up a little bit when we initially fired it up because it's getting some amperage draw through that circuit. Um, as long as it's not on continuously, and obviously if we fire up these motors, you're gonna see it increase the draw on the, the battery. But so far everything looks great. You can see we've got our bright tail lights on. We need to go in and configure some of this stuff now. So in the end, use a current limiting circuit to prevent you yourself from frying the board when you initially power it up. With that, let's get back on track and start configuring this thing. So we're making a lot of progress and we're just about done with the basic configuration. So going through the process, there's a lot of different things that need to be accounted for. And in my particular case, I had on-screen on display and I have these LEDs and I have, what else do I have? Um, the using SBUS and smart port and the VTX. So, and also the ESCs all need to be set up. So there's a lot of configuration options and there's no shortage of information online. And you can find just about any video about a combination of technology, but there's no one size fits all. And so you have to really read between the lines. Um, I would start out by reading all the technical documentation that come with the specific components that you purchase. That'll give you the best knowledge about the products that you're using in your build. Um, this is using the SP Racing flight controller and as such it uses the clean flight firmware and that's where you go in and configure all the specific settings. In this particular build we've got uh, RGB tail lights and, you, and those are all indi individually addressable so you can make as I did um, the left and right outermost LEDs to be turn indicators and then the remaining inner uh, RGBs are related to the throttle. They start out red when it's stopped on the ground and the more throttle I give it the brighter uh, shade of yellow it becomes until it turns almost green. Uh, so that's kind of cool but this board is very capable and is very efficient and can do uh, what you need it to do for a racing uh, flight controller. There are just idiosyncrasies that you have to learn and be aware of as you're configuring and set it up. And granted, this is my first build, um, so I'm not an expert at it, but these are the learnings that I found going through the process. Uh, in addition to all that flight controller information, getting that all set up and the, the receiver paired to the brand new remote and getting the remote channel set up, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. It's going to take some time. You want to do proper research to make sure that you Inactivity don't... Activity alarm. <laughs> I'm very active, but it apparently says that I'm inactive. So um, let's turn that off. So right, so there are a lot of uh, paths to getting this completed um, and you wanna make sure that you do it right. So take the time, do the research about the components that you wanna use uh, and then uh, draw up a schematic and put it together and just take it step by step. Now I'll include the schematic and the parts that I used for this build and it, it was pretty straightforward in the end. These props are on loose, but everything's configured. I'm waiting to get the goggles. Um, and probably next week we'll do a follow-up and see how quickly I crash this thing. Um, but until then, stay safe and have fun. As we go a little something like this, 